Hello guys, this is Deathrill and welcome back to another episode on the Orcraft server. We're 40 episodes in and we're still living in our starter base and let's just say this isn't working for me anymore. I keep on having trouble finding resources and stuff like that that I've stored away. Look, I found a full shulker box of smooth quartz blocks recently and I don't even know when I made them. That's how bad this is. So I think it's finally time we start work on a main base where we can make a central storage system because that's a really important part and if we do that first it means that making the rest of the base will be a fairly simple process. So recently, when I say recently, I mean a few episodes ago, we bought this Imperial airfield out in the middle of the ocean next to Splash's ship. The shopping district is just over there, the spawn island is way over there in the distance, we can't currently see it. And yeah, I planned on doing the Imperial themed build in this ocean here, so it would involve me building a Imperial city type thing with a massive custom island. But working on this project right here, I discovered something. I hate working on these islands, they're so annoying. And you can't just build a couple layers of them and then leave them floating above the ocean, no. You need to build them all the way down to the ocean floor. And I really wasn't a fan of that, so what I've decided to do is I've decided to adjust my plans a little bit. So we're going to keep this here. We're going to be working on the volcanic island chain with Splash in the near future, going over this way and then below her ship. But what we're going to do is we're going to fly over here because there's an unclaimed area that's a forest type next to where Zame and Alex lives. And I think... We can make quite good use of this area. I've spoke to Zaym and Alex, and we're planning and tying all three of our areas together with a railroad type thing and stuff like that. But before we can even do that, we need to actually start working on this thing. So I've been trying to figure out where the middle of this this rough area is, and it's around it's between this little pocket of water and this lava source. We're just going to use this pocket of water. So what we're going to need to do is we need to drain that, and then we're going to need to dig down to. Oh, I don't know, as long as we're above Y40, because we're going to be building a storage system underground. Because what we're going to be doing for this base is we're going to, have, we're going to be working with two distinct themes. A laboratory style theme, which will be the underground section, and then above ground we'll have a dirty industrial, you know, galactic empire look to it. So we're going to start with the storage room first, which means we need to excavate a lot of room. The one thing we've had with the starter base is we built that within a slime chunk and it was fairly well down, so we had slime spawning, and I want to avoid that. So we're going to go down to just above Y40, and then we're going to start building the thing there. I've already planned this build out. We're going to need to clear a lot of space, so let's do that before we start construction. Alright, so as you could tell by that time lapse and by the hole in front of us, I never went down as low as the world as I thought I was going to. So basically what I did was this storage room, I designed it in creative beforehand so I knew exactly how big of a space I'd need to use and so that I knew, you know, how this thing was going to look. So I brought the schematic into the world, obviously it doesn't actually exist, it's just in schematic form, and I started playing around with different heights and stuff like that. And... What I discovered was basically we brought it down low enough to the point where it was just below the height of that hill there. You can see the cut off right there. And I thought, well, I'm probably going to be terraforming a lot of this area up the ways anyway and then bringing it down closer to the coasts because, well, yeah, like there's higher elevations over there and I want to kind of tie that in with the rest of this area. So I thought, yeah, let's just bring this up in the world. Don't bring it down low because then I've got lots of extra work to do and stuff and it'll be harder to access when I'm building the rest of the area. So yeah, this is what we have so far. If we just take a little flight over yonder and we'll turn around. We've got quite a large footprint to work with. We're looking at about 80 blocks long. I think it's like 40 blocks wide and then around... I'm not actually sure, I'm probably about maybe 17 or 18 blocks tall. So I've got a lot of room here to work. Now, before we even started this episode, I took the liberty of collecting all the materials we needed in these shulker boxes. So these have been on me while I was excavating that entire area, which, yeah, it was a bit risky. You know, I could have died, could have lost all that stuff, but you know what, it's fine. So why don't we turn on hyperspeed build mode once again and get this storage room finished.
Alright guys, so we have the start to our base all nice and done. The storage room is complete. In that time lapse, compared to now you may notice there's a few minor differences. Mainly the height shape at the end of the wall is now gone. Mainly because I had to do some things with the carpets to stop mobs from spawning. And the lighting just wasn't behaving. As you can see, it's a lot duller in these images compared to the time lapse. That's because for the, the past little while, I've been playing with my gamma turned all the way up. So I didn't notice little things like lighting and stuff like that and I finally turned that off and I've started noticing a few things. So yeah, uh, a few of these areas are darker than I like them to be, but it's not dark to the point where we have problems. Fortunately we're using a lot of light blocks in this build, so lighting isn't really much trouble. Where the areas are darker, mainly in the corners and stuff up there, it's meant to be like that, hence why I used those different materials right there. I did have an instance where in the middle of the floor here, m uh, hostile mobs were spawning, mainly in this block. This block, this block, and this block. This is mainly due to the fact that the blocks in the, the sea lanterns here on the floor are pushed down one block. Because, you know, I didn't want the actual sea lanterns, you know, messing with the design of the floor and stuff. Because it's kind of bright and in your face. And not only that, the lighting that would normally cover this area would be right here. And obviously there's a pillar right here. Now if we look below here, as you can see, there is some sea lanterns. Sea lanterns below all of these carpets. And since it isn't in that situation right there mobs could spawn right there which was causing a lot of trouble. Also, what you didn't see in the time lapse because I just didn't think it would work because of the way I was doing my camera parts and stuff, we got the actual redstone in place. Now let's go into spectator mode to take a look at this so that we can get all nice and close. So what we've got is I've got a bit, um, an amount of impulse SV item sorters but we couldn't set them up pulling a reading straight from the hoppers due to the way the the ice streams had to be, so we had to pull the signal through the ice and then we had to do a little something a little bit different with the output here in order to lock the hoppers. I've done a lot of independent testing and this thing seems to work fairly well. One thing I should mention, this, this storage room design is my own custom one. If you want me to do a tutorial on it, I can, but this is, this is personal to me. So basically what we've got is this storage room can store 128 unique items and we can store two double chests of each of those. I was originally going to store a higher amount but that would have made our amount of hoppers insanely large. There's about 800 hoppers in this build, no that's a lie, there's closer to 900 hoppers in this build which is about our, the average amount of hoppers people use in their bases and stuff. I didn't want to you know do three or four thousand hoppers because that's not really fair to everyone else on the server. All in all this is quite nice. You may notice as well I had to do some lighting out here because mobs started spawning and not only that I'm trying to see if I can find a filter. I can't really find any on this side, but I know for a fact that some mob drops ended up in some of these filters over here, which is really not bad. There you go, see? Those filters are lit up because there's mob drops in there. We really need to handle that. And I think I'm going to do that right away. Before we do that, actually, I need to pick what items are going where because I haven't actually worked that stuff out yet. So let's populate these item frames with items, and then we can start populating the item filters themselves. All right, guys, so we got the storage system populated with items. We've worked out where all our items are going to go, and if we go and look in these chests, you can also see that we've populated the item filters in the back. This process took longer than I thought it would. First of all, it took a while just, you know, organising stuff where I wanted things, and then actually going through the system and putting in the, f the filters wasn't that bad, I just had to constantly run back and forth getting all the items we needed. But, it's done now, and <laughs> we don't need to worry about it again. Nice. But yeah, um, what we've went with, as we've got logs in this side, a few valuable resources, then all your stones, some bricks. Continuing along with those types of resources, then we've got a redstone, a little bit of redstone over there, and then everything else is just miscellaneous. I've even got a dedicated area for beacons, and also a dedicated area for <laughs> nether stars and skulls. Yeah, obviously those aren't really that, that valuable, because you know we've got that farm and stuff like that, but yeah. I am quite happy with it. Also, I have a severe mauling voice in this clip. <laughs> I've just realised I don't need to stop recording the maulings. Anyways, what we need to do now is we need to actually fill this thing with the resources in our base. But we're not going to do that right now because I've got an insane amount of stuff. Now, what you may notice is we don't have any crafting tables in here. A storage room should have a crafting table or several. We could have put it in here where we've got the ender chest and an infinite water source which we have on the other side as well, but I didn't really like the idea of that. And let's just say I don't like walking around to get to craft stuff. So what we need is we need crafting tables all along the floor here. 
but I don't want them exposed all the time. So what we need to do is we need to do a little bit of redstone to make a pop-up crafting table system. Alright, we got the pop-up crafting tables in place, so let's test this system. There we go, they pop up and it's the same on the other side and then we retract them once again. It keeps the fall looking all nice. Let's just demonstrate it with the other side, just so that I can prove that it's actually here. There we go. And there we go as well. Now let's see, we should be able to get back down here and we can take a look at the redstone because it is actually fairly simple. So let's just pop on down here. So simple redstone line coming down. And it's just basically you're working with priorities of you know pistons being pushed in. So the idea is this piston will be retracted and then this will push in and then up you go. And that's due to the way this repeater is right here. Well no, this, this repeater doesn't actually do anything, it just kind of makes this system a little bit faster. But yeah, I am quite happy with this setup. I'm quite happy with this storage room as well, it's really come together in a short amount of time, which is fantastic. Alright, so now that we've got the storage room done, we need to go and have another Captains of Industry meeting with Rustic and Splashes because we are long overdue. Fellow Captains, welcome to meeting like 7, 6, 8, I never counted. I have no idea. Yeah, it's about yeah. that, I think. <laughs> Me neither. So, okay, you might be wondering why I, I asked you guys to, to come here instead. This is our office, right? Oh, is it? Yeah, sure I mean, it is. might as well be. Yeah, sure, let's take it. <laughs> no, the the real reason is because we don't have an office. You, as you guys might have seen, I have taken down the entire desert, apart from the chunk we normally stand on, and there's still nothing there. I have finally made a design. Okay. Ooh. Yes, and I, I'm here to say that I um I I've, I've made a design. I'm going to be starting to build this this week, but uh, I have sent you guys a list with materials that I need. That's a lot of glass, Rusty. That's a lot of glass. I, it's and quartz. I haven't actually put my quartz <laughs> villagers in place yet. I I might might need some help collecting that at some point. Uh, I'll, I'll yeah, try to get as much as I <laughs> Yeah, we, we probably are. Um, so, what have you guys been uh, been working on? Uh, well, we we finished the the glass trader. I still need to put uh -huh. the quartz villagers in place, but Death and I are going to open up a new shop at some point so we can sell those things because there's lots of people that need quartz and glass. Indeed. Oh well, that is that is a a very cool plan. Yeah. I have okay. made a garden farm, which is a really I good... helped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Splash <laughs> helped. She she was there. Uh, we we made a garden noticed. farm. It makes it makes I like noticed. ten shulkers of sea sea lanterns. Yeah, that's the word per hour. So yeah, um, Zem, I'm coming from your market share. Uh, no, <laughs> uh, and I finally broke down to my base as well. All right. Well, it, it seems like we've been doing doing very good lately. The now, captain's of planning has done something. Yay! For sure. Yeah, I, I was going to pick up the diamonds uh, that we that we made recently, but they are still over in the desert area. So I'll I'll, I'll check that out in a bit. But yeah, we've been doing good. So, uh, yay! Meeting adjourned. Meeting adjourned. Sure. All right. So that meeting was quite productive. We don't really have these meetings all that often, but when we do, we. We normally plan to build something and then it never happens, but I can say that the captains of planning not only planned something, we also built it as well. So make sure you go and check Rustic's episode for the HQ building. Now the main reason I'm also over here as well is because we've made some profits in the beacon shop, mainly from Rustic because, funny story, he needed some beacons and rather than asking me, he wanted to buy them from the shop. Which, which is fine, but then he forgot to pay, and I was like, oh no, someone hasn't paid for all those beacons and stuff. And it turns out it was rustic, so he came and brought us a bunch of diamonds. So now, I need to split these four ways and then give some of them back to him, which is kind of funny. So let's collect all of those, I need to restock this, it should be a fairly quick process. And yeah, we haven't made any well of skull sales either. Next episode, I am planning on working on another shop. It's either going to be a wrestling contraption shop or another one in collaboration with Splashes. Or that might be another week. It's kind of weird. I am a bit ahead in production of videos right now. Because, you know, I'm just trying something a little bit different in the channel. So, yeah, I'm a little bit mixed up with all this stuff. But, yeah, why don't we head on over to the meeting place to drop off these diamonds. And so that we can see this headquarters that Rustic has built. 
Alright, so what was once a desert island is now no more. It is now <laughs> terraformed into something quite interesting. So this was the original lime concrete, but it was replaced because it really didn't look good. I know it looks a lot more similar to like the new moss stuff in 1.17, and I quite like that this texture a lot more now. But yeah, look at this thing, it's like a biodome style thing. We've got different corridors, so I believe that's for Splash, that one over there is for Rustic, and then this blue one is for myself, so let's enter from this side. I, I really love looking at this thing. Not only that, if we turn on shaders, this place looks excellent. In fact, what we're going to do is we'll turn on shaders in just a moment. I need to go and drop these diamonds off. But yeah, no, I'm just a really big fan of this bold. It looks awesome. It looks really, really cool. So our meeting area is just over here, over this little bridge. You can see where the, the beacons from the beacon shop were used. And here is our little meeting spot. So we've got three shulkers. Red, blue, purple. Okay, so let's see. So let's put... Those in there for Rustic, these in here for myself, oh I've got a bunch more diamonds in there, that's cool. Those in there for Splash, and finally, I believe this is the actual stockpile thing. Yes it is, okay cool, that's awesome. What I'm going to do actually is I'm going to take my supply of diamonds and those ink sacks, because yeah, I love me some diamonds. Alright, let's throw on the, what do you call it, the shaders, and we can take a look at this thing in exquisite detail. Alright, so I'm using the Silders Vibrant Extreme Shaders. I also have the Volumetric Lighting Shaders, but I'm not personally a fan of them. So I'm just going to be going with the regular Extreme version of this. And this place looks awesome. We've got those fireflies around the tree, the reflection of the water. Just, oh, I love this place. It looks so, so good. Rustic, you've truly outdone yourself. And not only that, this place is actually big enough to fly around. Oh, and would you look at that? There's one of our newest members of the server, Asta. He's just joined the game. Make sure you have to check the... The link's in the description for all of our server members. Make sure you subscribe to all of them. But yeah, no, Rustic, you've done a fantastic job. So everyone, once you're finished watching this video, what I want you to do is I want you to leave a like. And then I want you to go over to Rustic's channel and give his episode a watch. Alright, so I've just been streaming over on Twitch. Why don't you go and check out twitch.tv forward slash jefflyt. I stream over there fairly frequently. And what we did on stream was we sorted through all of the stuff over at my base. We spent the whole two hour period going through a lot of stuff and this storage system that's the complete wrong chest we've now got a lot of items in here and i mean a lot not only that i actually discovered we had a lot more shulker boxes than i originally thought and i was able to free up a full double chest plus this much that's about 80 shulker boxes i managed to free up we've had this problem where we've been short in shulker boxes for most of the season so what i do is i normally go to the end get some more and then I use them and then immediately lose them in the annoyingness that was my previous base. That's no longer an issue. We've got some additional resources in here as well. Now that we've got this story system built, we can populate this story system with items straight away. There'll be no need to put the shulker boxes elsewhere for example. So that's quite nice. So we've got 80 shulker boxes right there. We have some additional shulker boxes down here where I discovered the building blocks we were going to need for this this entire Imperial project. So some wool, some concrete, some more concrete, and then some more concrete there. So yeah, I'm quite happy we discovered that because if I never made this project, if I never made the story system, I probably would never have discovered that not only do we have all those shulker boxes, but that we also had all these shulker boxes full of different materials. So I know you can't see anything right now, but we're over at the perimeter where we have the Mega Island Farm. I still need to actually get the filters for the the actual storage for that thing set up, I haven't done that yet. But it turns out, I've left a ton of resources over here from when we are building this thing because we collected more materials than we actually needed. So I've got a ton of shulkers here, lots of shulkers here, and a massive line of them here. So I need to go and get all this stuff sorted out, which is probably going to take quite some time. And then, we'll have plenty of shulkers that we won't even know what to do with them, which is super good. Alright, so we got that stuff all squared away, that was a lot of items. And the funny thing is, there's still more items over there that I never showed you in the last clip. You remember that world eater we built? Yeah, that's right, the world eater that cleared that perimeter six months ago. All the resources for that are still over there on a the chest. But, they're going to be a lot easier to move, so I'm going to be doing that in between episodes. But yeah, we've reclaimed an insane amount of shulker boxes for this project, so let's go and take a look at our final results. So that's 54 shulker boxes there, that's another 54. So that's 108, and then we add on an additional 10, so we've got 118, that's right, 100, 
and 18 shulker boxes that have been reclaimed from various projects around the server of mine, which is really, really good. This means that we'll be able to use a raid farm for longer than five minutes, which is really nice, and we'd also be able to use our wood farm and stuff. I will be working on the wood farm a little bit. When I say working on it, I mean, like, you know, redoing the hoppers. The, the hoppers, and the shulker box loaders at the bottom. But yeah, they work. They're just they're really, really slow. Or maybe I just need to use the farm for a long period of time, which I'm really not a fan of, to be fair. So yeah, I need to get back to that fairly, fairly soon. But no, now that we've got all the resources in one location, actually planning ahead for projects won't be all that bad. Because we've got a central storage thing, so we can store most of the important things like sand, gravel, all that stuff. We've got a ton of resources in here that's ready for, you know, expanding and working on the Imperial section of the base, which is also quite nice. And not only that, I'm just a lot happier with this system. I can, I can sort it manually, or I can just throw everything into this chest right here and let it sort automatically. It's funny because during this entire process, even though we could automate the sorting process, I never did. I did it manually, which was, which is more than fine for me. If we did it automatically, we'd we'd still be doing it right now, which is which is not ideal. So yeah, um, if you guys liked this episode, make sure you leave a like. Let me know what you thought about it in the comments, and why don't you check out the rest of the series if you're new here? Because yeah, we're 40 episodes in, 40. That's right, and we're going to be up in production on our episodes very very soon. So make sure you check them out. And if you've run out of content for me to watch, make sure you go and check out the other members of the Autocraft server. There's a link to them in the description down below. I'd like to thank you all for watching this episode of the Autocraft so far. Make sure you go and watch everyone else on the server. On the left hand screen right now, there are two videos. One that YouTube wants you to watch and one that I think you should watch. Make sure you go and watch them and remember to leave a like, subscribe and hopefully you will enjoy the videos.